So one of the last things to do before the MOT is due again this year is the front bushes. So today we're going to take a look at these front control arms. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get the car off the ground and the wheels off. So the car's up in the air, nice and totally on the axle stands. We've got the trolley jack in there as well, just supporting it still. We've got the wheels under there just for a bit of added extra safety and plus the back wheels are also chocked back and front as well. So with the wheel now off, we can see the main control arm. So obviously we've got three fixings. There's one here, which is where the first bush is, where we've got an advisory on the MOT from last year. Just over here is where the second fixing is, and that's when it, where the big challenge is gonna to be today, really, because the fixing needs to go out towards the front of the car. So we're gonna to need to take some bits and pieces off for that. And then the third point is just down here as it comes down into the ball joint at the bottom, and that's where we're gonna to need to obviously disconnect that as well. So we've got the one, two, three joints to disconnect today, and then we should be able to take it out, get the new one back in, and then put it all back together. And today we're gonna to be doing both the left and the right side of the car. So to get to the fixing, this front fixing for the control arm, what I'm going to need to do is remove kind of a support beam under here. But to get to that, what I'm going to need to do is take off this bit of panel in here and then take off kind of all this under tray here as well. So what I'm going to do is just work around removing all these T30 heads, head or screws, shall we say, just all the way around, just so I can drop it all the way down. Because we're doing both this side of the car and the other side of the car as well, it makes sense to drop the whole thing. And then just inside here in the wheel arch, to remove this plastic cover, what we've got is another T30 there, another T30 there. I think there's a Phillips there, and I think that's about it. So we'll just get those three off, and then it should just come away. I know the one on the other side, there's another fixing kind of right up the top here. So we'll have a look at that in a second, just so that we can access this fixing bar. It's just as expected. And I thought I did remember actually from when we removed this before, there is another fixing up here. So I'll just have a look and get that off now. Okay, so I think for the sake of expediency, what I'm gonna do, because I can't remember exactly where that fixing is, and obviously I can't get my hand down there. What I probably need to do regardless anyway, is remove kind of the fixings just on this inner wheel arch liner to get to it so I can pull it forward. But because I'm gonna have to do it this side, I know I'm gonna have to do it the other side. I've already got the bottom cover off. So all that's left to remove the bumper is actually just these four fixings. So to speed things up, I'm just gonna whip it off really quickly. Okay, so there we go. So that's much better now that's off. We've got a lot more working space. And in there we can see that we've got this, I think it's a 10 mil socket in there. Just try that. Not that you can see anything at the minute, but yeah, it's a 10 mil socket. So I'll just get that undone and then that allow us to take that bit of inner lining off. But for those that haven't taken the bumper off before, all we've got is just four Phillips screws and another T30. And they just go, you can see the holes here, one, two, three, four. And then the T30 just goes at the top here. It's the same on the other side. There's a little row of clips just along here and around the front of the light. And then on the top, what you've got is four T55 fixings. So you just loosen them off. Under these four Phillips, now the last T30, pull the bumper forward and it comes away. And then you can just release the fog light plug, which is over here and then the whole bumper will just come away. If you've not seen it, watch the video on how to remove the front bumper and that'll tell you everything that you need to know. Okay, so with those four fixings removed, just the two T30s, the Phillips, and that little 10 mil nut, what we should be able to do now is just release this kind of inner liner. You can see it's obviously hooked on a little bit just over the top there. So that just needs to come away. And then what we should be able to do is just kind of drop it all down from behind here. I might need to put the camera down. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to move to do it, holding the camera, but he says, there we go, it does just slide down and away and out. So that's what it looks like once it's, once it's out. And that gives us access to this support bar. And you can see now that fixing for that front control arm is kind of hidden behind here. So what we're gonna need to do is release these two fixings and get this bar out of the way. But before we can do that, we need to remove this fixing here. And to help move it out of the way, we can see as it comes up, it's actually fixed in through this crash bar as well. So what we're gonna do is just release these, get these out of the way, pull it forward, so that we can then actually kind of move that whole thing out of the way so that we can get to that fixing in there. Over on the other side of the car, you can see exactly the same. So we kind of got that bit of inner liner as well. Again, two T30 fixings, uh, another Phillips screw, and then just the same as before, we've got that other 10 mil fixing just up here somewhere just about see it in there there is just through that little gap just right in there so that's what i'm just gonna release that one and then do the same on this side okay so these fixings at the front just here holding the support beam are a number 15 so it's just three of them one two and three and 
Okay, and then the support bar here, actually coming down, that's number 15 as well. So we just whip that off as well. And then just under the support bar here, you can see we've got two fixings here. These are both an E18. So I'm just gonna get a bit on the breaker bar just so that we can loosen them off. What I'm gonna do first, just get a bit of WD-40 or something on the fixings up here. And then there's one last 10 mil bolt just going into the bottom here, holding on the under tray. So we can just remove this one, pull it out. Okay, great, so we've all those fixings removed. What we should be able to do now is just push it out of the way so that we can access that fixing. And there we go, quite simply, there it is. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same around this side. Just release this 15 mil one here. The 15 mils at the front I've done already. And then it would just be that one 10 mil nut underneath here and then those two T T 18s I think they were just on the underneath of here so that we can push that out of the way and get to that fix in there so with all those bits out of the way and now we've got loads of access to the fixings that we need what we can see when we follow the control arm down is it just comes to the ball joint here where we've got this one fix in here which just basically acts like a clamp so as the ball joint goes up this kind of squeezes together and it keeps it in there nice and tight so what I'm going to do is just get this one released now and then we can look to remove the ball joint. So this fix in here is a E14, I think it is. Yeah, E14. And then around the back, what we've got is just a 16 mil socket. So we'll just get that on now and then we can whip this one out quickly. So I actually took this off the other day. So hopefully it's going to be a bit easier to take it off today. But what you might find is it's quite corroded on there. You're going to need to actually get your wire brush on there, clean it all up, get some WD-40 on there. Maybe get a breaker bar on there just to break it away as well. But for today, I've just got my 16 mil bit on the back. I'm just going to use the gun and just whip this one out now. Okay, so there we go. We can see them fixings there. They're nice and covered in grease. Like I say, the other day, I actually took them out and removed them. They were a bit corroded, quite corroded to be fair, and they were tough the other day to get out. But that's why I kind of did a bit of prep for today so that I could save a bit of time. So that's out. So now what we need to try and do is just get this ball joint off of here. So I know these control arms can be a little bit challenging to get out of these ball joints sometimes. Sometimes a good few knocks straight away just with a hammer and it will come out nice and easily. But what I'm gonna try and do first is just lever it down, just get a crowbar in here and just try and try and pull it down a little bit and see if that works. If not, we'll get a hammer on it and give it a good, sm good smack. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well. Like I always say at the end of my videos, the more likes and subscribers, the more videos I'm gonna keep making. And just a bit of WD-40, hopefully help it move. Well, so there we go. So it's just about out, you can see now. To be fair, that's been the toughest challenge of all the things that I've ever done. What I've actually done is ended up kind of releasing some of the fixings up here. You can see, I think that's an E20 and the E18 for the other side of it. Uh, yeah, it's kind of having to get the various kind of different pry tools in there. The, as you saw, kind of the crowbar and the, uh, the wedge at the same time to try and kind of force it apart. Um, it's taken a long while to be fair. As I was hitting it initially, what it was doing was actually going further up into it, making it more of a challenge to get anything out. So what I've been able to do now though, obviously, as you can see, is kind of drive two wedges in there. Initially, it was just kind of a single wedge, just this one, and that went in there and it kind of really helped. But then once it got too big for that, obviously I then had to use the crowbar in there at the same time to push it 
apart even further. So I'm just going to carry on, finish getting this one off, and then what we should be able to do, hopefully just up this end, is just pull them out so that it's nice and free. Just trying to pry this control arm out, you can see this kind of a little bit of chip paint there, where it's just hitting the underside of the, uh, the anti-roll bar. So what I've had to do is just release the anti-roll bar from the drop links, because it was pulling it right down. And hopefully what that'll do, I've done this side and the other side as well at the same time. So hopefully what that should do is just give us a bit more flex so that we can work this control them out a whole lot easier. This last bit, you can see it's kind of just about nearly all the way up, but it's still proven to be a right pain. So obviously that's why we've done that bit with the, uh, the anti-roll bar up there that you can just about see, to hopefully ease off a bit of pressure. And I've also just put the jack just underneath, just lightly, just to take off a little bit of strain just from the, the hub. So hopefully this last bit now will just come down and just pop out. Let's see how we get on though. So obviously, as we know, we've taken the fixings out. So I think this one here was the E18. Just got the two fixings there. It kind of come in from that direction. And this one here over this side was an E20. So kind of a bit bigger. There's more torque on that. We'll see when we come to torque them back up. But now with it released, it should come out, he says, hopefully a bit easier. We might need to get a pry bar on there or something just to pull them out. But nope, there we go. And away it comes, fantastic. Okay, so now with it off, we can have a good look. We can see obviously the damage that we caused just to the rubber there, I've turned it around into the light. So just as we've been hammering away, trying to get it off, we split that. So there was no going back, it had to come off, but it's actually really quite loose to be fair. So it'll be good to be changing this. With the bridges themselves, this is what we've got the MOT advisory for. So we can see that it is just starting to split in there. Obviously about a year ago or so, it might have been a little bit less. It's a little bit corroded and stuff there. On the underside, again, it's kind of all starting to split there and stuff like that. So definitely need a change in. The main one, kind of the front and the control arm. Here again, you can see it's kind of looking a bit sorry for itself. So yeah, no issues with changing these whatsoever. So let's have a look at the new one. The side by side, there we go. We can see the difference or we can see the similarities, obviously look exactly the same measurements wise. I did check before we kind of jumped in and started the video, but we can see they're exactly the same size. So the same fittings. Take the protective cap off of there. You can see obviously exactly the same there as well. That one's just a little bit higher, there we go. So let's get this new one back on. I think what we'll do as well, just before we do put it on, we'll just give this a little clean up in here, just inside the subframe, just so we can have a nice environment, or a nice environment, just so it could be nice and tidy for us. And we know with everything else that we do in the car, that it's as clean as it possibly can be. So just before we put this in, obviously I've given it a little clean up in there, just kind of superficial. But what I'm also gonna do is just put a bit of rubber grease, just kind of where it's gonna go in, just gonna rub and stuff like that, just to help it slide in a little bit easier. Okay, so obviously at the minute as well, what I've done is removed the jack from this point. So there's nothing holding it up. So whether or not I'm gonna to need to put the jack back in place just to give it a bit of lift, just to get the same angle for the control arm to go into, we'll find out. But obviously with the, the angle, if I hold this up, you can see it's kind of natural sitting position isn't straight up. It wants to go back there kind of the whole time. So we'll get, see how we get on. Let's give it a go. Um, if I need to put the jack back in, then I will put the jack back in. Okay, brilliant. So we've got this one in, and we've got the one at the back in. So now we just need to get the pin in the hub here. Okay, there we go. That feel pretty positive. I think what actually happened was it pulled out a little bit on the drive shafts. So just up here and at the other end, it kind of come forward a little bit. So the hub or the whole knuckle was too far that way as such. So I just pushed it back in, give it a little twist as it went, 
and it's gone back in nicely. So now it's just gonna be a case of helping or supporting this back in here. So what I think I'm gonna do is just put the jack underneath it just to give it a little helping hand just to shove it up. Okay, so with a little bit of pressure on there, we can see it's kind of just starting to go in a little bit. So what we're looking out for, if you saw, if you remember, there was kind of a, a groove or a channel all the way through it. That's where it's gonna line up with the hole. I'm not sure if I can get the hole in the light there. There we go, there's a bit of dirt in there that we can clean out. But basically, as I lift this up, what we should see is kind of that start to go in and it should just pop through nicely. And there we go, that looks like it's about home. So what I'm gonna try and do now is just offer that fixing back in and then if it goes in, fine. We know that it's lined up nicely. If not, it just needs to go up or down ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of offer this in, see if it wants to go through. Basically work it in. If it's not gonna go in, what I'll do, I'll just move the jack out of the way, offer it in a little bit, give it a little bit of support, a bit of a wiggle and so on. And then I'll just get the fix in on the other side, nice and loose in there. Okay, brilliant. So we can see it's just coming through there now, which is really good. Just took a little tap, just a gentle light tap, just with the back of a screwdriver, and it's worked its three through perfectly. So with that fixing in, what I'm gonna do is just get a bit of thread lock on there. Just a little bit of blue thread lock on there. There we go. And I'll just get that tightened up now, just with that same socket, I think it was a 15 mil. Okay, so then next up is this back one. So what we're gonna do, just get our bolt again. I'm just gonna put a bit of thread lock on there once again, just as we did with the one at the front. Just drop that on there, offer it up through the hole. There we go. And it was the way it come off, it did actually come up from the bottom. So we've got the big washer that goes on there first, and then we've got that nut with the captive kind of washer on it as well. So if I can do this too handy behind the camera, Again, what we'll do, I just do this up finger tight or relatively tight, and then we can chalk it up once the car's in position. And then the last fixing for this arm is obviously this E20 bolt that goes in here. But we can see it's not gonna go in because it's slightly out of alignment. So I'm just gonna use my screwdriver just to kind of lift it up slightly, he says, and then just to get that in alignment. So it's gonna be a little bit challenging. There we go, if I can just hold it in place as well at the same time. About there, I think, slide it in. Fantastic, there we go. I'm not sure if you saw that at all, I'm sure that I might have had my hand in the way. But what I can do now again, is just get this done up just lightly so that we can talk it back up once it's down on the ground. So in actual fact, what you'd need to do to get the car on the ground is put this support bracket back in place so then you wouldn't be able to get to it. So what I've done for now is just put the jack just underneath the, the whole hub, the whole knuckle, everything. Just lifted it up as though it was back on the ground. So it's about the right height. And from there now what we can do so this first one, we're gonna do this to about 120. I'll put the things up on screens now, or the settings up on the screen. The one at the back, I think it's 80 newton meters plus about 90 meters, uh, 90 degrees rather. And then this one just under here, where we had the problem trying to get it off is only 50 to 60 newton meters. And then with all those talked up, what I'm gonna do now is just drop the hub down slowly and then we can put some copper grease on the top of those fixings. On my way out today, what I thought I'd do, as we changed the drop link on the other side the other week, I thought I'd just change the drop link on this side today. So if you haven't seen that video, just watch it and you'll see exactly how it's done. And then now what we can do is just bring this support bar back across, line it up, and we can get these two fixings in here, and they're both 180 newton meters. And then next up, I'll just get the three crash bar ones in, the one holding in the support here, and then we'll have a look at maybe getting that wheel well in. So with that support bar all back in place, all the fixings back in, even that vertical wing as well. What we're gonna do now is just get this inner kind of wheel arch liner piece back in. I'm just gonna offer it in. I won't bore you with showing you the fixings. We know exactly where they are. There's just the one at the top that kind of goes up behind there. And then we've got the two T30s plus one Phillips as well. I think it's about there as well. So I'll just get these back in and then we can look at the other side. Okay, brilliant. So that's all back together now. What I've actually done is just left the drop link disconnected because as we did had to disconnect it for this side, I'm guessing we're probably gonna need to do the same or it might be easier, maybe we don't have to, but it might be easier just to leave it disconnected to go and do the other side. So what I've done, just left the old one on the floor to remind me to make sure that we tighten that up before we come back to it and put it all back together. 
And then obviously before we put the wheel back on, we make sure that we use a good bit of brake cleaner just to tidy it up because we've been using rubber grease and copper grease and all sorts of greases and stuff like that. So then over on this side, obviously we can say we know we've got the drop link disconnected, just the same as we said on the other side. So what we need to do is kind of repeat exactly what we've just done. So we've got the rear fix in there, the front fix in there, and then obviously the fix in just underneath the knuckle here, right at the bottom. So this one's gonna be the challenging one again. So I'm gonna start here, and then what I'll do, I'll get it all stripped out. And if there's any particular challenges on this side, what I'll do, I'll just make sure that I capture that on video as well. Just as a quick update on this side, you can see I've kind of got the wedges in there. It's proving really difficult again, once again, but I'm persevering, it's starting to move now. It's been quite a while of hammering and banging, but it is going. So it's obviously been 11 years since they were last removed or <laughs> never fitted. So I'm nearly there, I hope, anyway, at least they're moving now, so I'll we'll crack on and get this one off. It's a brief update. We've managed to get this one out finally. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't start with this one because I might not have done the other side. I've ended up having to resort to heat and everything. It was so ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. It was just so firmly in there. It was such a challenge, I tell you, it's taken forever to get it off. But I'm so glad I've got it off now. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a clean up or I've given it a little bit of a rinse already. So now I'm just gonna refit this arm exactly the same way. Gonna get some of the red grease on there, get them back in, get the bolts in there, finger tight. Lift the hub up so it's kind of under pressure a little bit and then I can get them all talked up and get all the things back together. It's a quick update. You can probably tell by some of the fixings. We're all back together now. The control arm is back in. It's all greased up again, exactly the same as we did before. Uh, we talked up, obviously we put it under tension as well. Done the drop link on this side. We've got a drop link just to tighten up on the other side. Uh, we've got this support beam is back in. All the fixings on that are back in. So now what I'm gonna do is just get this cover piece back in here. We're gonna do the drop link on the other side. Then I think we can start looking at getting the bumper back on and getting it all back together. So we're all fixed in all the way up here. The bumper's all back on, which is brilliant. All the fixings all the way underneath, both sides as well. That's all done, everything's all back together. So now it's just a case of getting the wheels on and getting the car back down. So it's all back down on the ground. All the wheels are torqued up, 120 on the front there. The jacks are all out, we've got to get the chocks just off the back wheels. But we'll get all this stuff shoved indoors and then we'll go for a quick test drive and see how it handles. Okay, so back from a test drive and everything's all good. It's all towing nice and straight, realistically. I've got it booked in for the MOT this Saturday anyway. So at the same time, what I'm gonna do is just get them to check the track in and just make sure it's all good off the back of doing anything like that as well. Because obviously doing any suspension work, you should really get the tracking done once it's all complete. But I think I can honestly say that trying to get those ball joints out was absolutely the most challenging thing that I've ever done on this car for sure. I'd definitely like to take the opportunity to apologise to any of my neighbours as well, if any of them were listening, which I'm sure they every single one of them were, because I was hammering for hours. So apologies to all of my neighbours up and down the road. But for now, I'm really pleased with how it went. It's all done and dusted. So all those bushes are all complete. So the advisories from the MOT last year, the only one that's left, which I was really hoping to get done today, but because of the problems I've had and the time that it's taken, was just actually gonna be the anti-roll bar bushes. So up in there, we can see them. So hopefully that's gonna be a job for next weekend. So for now then, that's it. If you've enjoyed it, please do give us a like down below. I've put a lot of effort into this one today. I can't believe how hard it's been. So I really would appreciate a like if you're able to. So remember to hit subscribe coming up here now as well. Like I always say, the more likes, the more subscribes means the more videos I'm gonna keep making. With the nice weather coming out now as well, I'm gonna be doing more things like the spraying, spraying the brake calipers and refurbishing the wheels as well, hopefully this year. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.